Continuing on from the previous video where we got some general solutions to the classical wave equation, we're going to look at the specific case of a one-dimensional vibrating string. So to review from last time, we have some string here which is going to vibrate with some displacement u which is going to be vary, varying over position x and time t. And any, dis, any displacement in this is going to propagate forward with some velocity v. So this type of system is going to obey this second order partial differential equation, which is the classical wave equation down here. Now we used separation of variables to s hypothesize that we can separate this into a function of x and a function of t, which together give us the total function. And then we went through some general principles to derive the case that the function of x is some cosine of x and sine of x and that the function of t is some cosine of t and sine of t. So now to go beyond that, we're going to apply the specific conditions of the problem at hand. Now this string is going to be fixed at x is going to be fixed at displacement equals 0 for x equals 0. So u of 0 for all t is going to equal 0. And similarly at x equals l, we're going to have u of lt also equals 0, as it's fixed at that end as well. So it's just going to vibrate between these two fixed points uh, throughout time. These specific conditions are called boundary conditions, and they're going to give us the specifics we need to solve the problem more specifically than these very general forms that we have up here. So if we look at um, the case for the spatial part, we're going to have some function, we're going to have x of 0 equals 0, and thus we have equals a cosine of beta 0 is 0, plus b sine of 0. Well, sine of 0 is just 0, so this term goes away. We don't know anything about b. and Cosine of 0 is 1, so the only way to get this to equal 0 is if we make a equal 0. So this first condition here gives us that a equals 0, and the spatial part is just a function of x. Now looking at the second part here, we have x of l equals 0. So we have b sine and then beta x the value of x is l, so we have b sine of beta l equals 0. Now we could pick b equals 0, but then our displacement is just 0 at all space and all time, and that's the string is completely at rest, the string isn't vibrating. That's called the trivial solution, and we don't want the trivial solution. We want the solution for when the string is moving, when it is vibrating, not when it's sitting still. So we don't know about that, so the only other way is to set the value of sine beta l equal to 0. So let's think about the sine function. When does the sine function equal 0? Well, it equals 0 at 0, and then again at pi, then again at 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. So the sine equals 0 when it is some integer multiple of pi. 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So we see a correspondence here that sine of beta l equals 0 and sine of n pi equals 0. So we can conclude from that that beta l equals n pi. And then subsequently we can solve for beta and we have beta equals n pi over l. So we now know since a equals 0, beta equals n pi over l, that our spatial function equals a constant times sine n pi and then the x part over l. So this is the spatial part of our function. Then uh, adding in time to that, <clears throat> well this time part well, we can't get much more specific than that. We know what the value of, uh, value of beta is, so we can throw that in there as well. But 
beyond having, it's kind of messy having this cosine and sine. So instead of having both of those, we're going to combine those into a cosine function with a phase. Anytime you have a cosine and a sine with the same factor in front, this beta v here, you can combine them into just, into just a cosine or a sine with some phase factor. So let's do that. So let's say t of t equals some constant times cosine, plugging in beta we know is n pi over L, and we also have v and t in there. Uh, it's kind of a sloppy v, let's do better. v and t. Okay, so now we have basically our total equation here. We have u of xt equals, and this constant times this constant, these are both arbitrary constants, so together we're just going to get one arbitrary constant out in front. So I'm going to put, I'm going to call that a and put that out in front. So we have a cosine n pi v times t over l. And then that is times the spatial part, which is sine n pi x over l. And then you notice that I've left some space here, and why is that? That is because not only is this a solution for n equals 1, but it's also a solution for n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, etc. So any value of n is going to be a solution to this equation as well. So what we really need is a sum, and this sum is going to go from n equals 1 all the way up to n equals infinity. And we can have any constant for each value of n, so a specific a sub n, and then cosine n pi vt over l sine n pi x over l. So that is our most general so that is our most general solution to the classical wave equation for a one-dimensional vibrating string. And we're going to see a lot of parallels between this and the first quantum mechanical system we're going to solve, which is a which is called particle in a box. So, just to make some just to make some final notes here, um, you're going to have these functions of u, which depend on the value of n. Let's just call them u sub n because they're different for different n's. It's basically take a specific value of n and substitute it in there. These are what we call the normal modes. Basically we can take any function which satisfies the conditions here, any function which is zero here and here and has any value we want in between, and we can decompose it into a sum of these normal modes. So we can say that these normal modes can represent any function within the space that they span. And if you wanted to get what those individual coefficients are, because they only they only vary for these individual uh, they only vary for these a sub n. If you wanted to get what those coefficients are, you would just um, that would be the equivalent of a Fourier series. So if you know what a Fourier series is, you would get you would um, get the the individual values of these a sub n that way. And these normal modes, we're also going to see, are not going to be moving in space. They're going to be standing waves. And in the next video, we'll show a cool example of how. These standing waves, which by themselves don't move, don't move left to right, they only move up and down. How these standing waves, when you combine them together, this, they start to form motion to the, to the left and to the right. So these waves, which don't displace to the left and to the right themselves, when you add them together, they form waves which flow back and forth. And that's how we can represent any function. But that function can in the end be decomposed back into these normal modes
with these different coefficients here.